Hello, and welcome to our Monday Thursday service. I'm Tiffany Detain, the pastor of Manitou United Methodist Church. And on behalf of our church community, I'd like to thank you for joining us in worship this evening. Do you remember the last supper before the pandemic? The last meal you had out at a restaurant with friends? The last meal before fear and anxiety ran the conversation? If you had known it was your last, would you have lingered? Would you have ordered dessert? Would you have held your friend's hands and told them how much you loved them? If you had known, would you have washed their feet? Tonight we gather together because this night was the beginning of the end. This night was Jesus' last supper with his disciples. Take a moment to imagine how Jesus must have felt. Friends, with all this in mind, I invite you to join me in our opening words. Tonight we will hear again and again of a love that knows no bounds. May we be fully present here. May we worship holy God. crucifixion, the more earnest our prayers of confession feel. 
For we know that what was done to Jesus, a betrayal, humiliation, violence, and death, are things that we do to each other all the time. So with all earnestness, a sense of urgency, a deep hope for transformation, we return to this prayer once again, trusting that the God who holds the stars in the sky is holding us tonight. Let us confess together. Holy God who holds us together, if I were to place myself at your table, I would probably be Peter, misunderstanding your radical hospitality, sticking to the rules, arguing what I do and don't deserve. Then again, it's possible I'd be Judas, the one who betrayed you, the one who failed to see the good right in front of them, the one who might have thought he wasn't worthy of your love. If I were to place myself at your table, it's possible I would be one of the unnamed disciples, watching but not speaking, silently missing the opportunity to tell you what I believe and how much I love you. If I were to place myself at your table, I am confident that I would have made the same mistakes your well-intentioned disciples made. There is no surprise there. What is surprising is that I know you would have washed my feet nonetheless. So forgive me, God. Wash not just my feet, but my hands and my head also. Amen. Hear these words of forgiveness. Family of faith, Jesus knew that Peter would deny. He knew that Judas would betray, and he knew the disciples would hide in fear. And still, and still, he invited them in. He washed their feet and he fed them. Friends, we worship the living Christ whose love shocks and surprises and far exceeds our understanding of love. So may this story remind us, no matter who we are, no matter where we go, no matter how great our mistakes or regrets in life, we will always be invited in and held together by the living God. Again and again, and again, we are forgiven. Again, and again, and again, we are held. Amen. Strangers 
I bet they would have listened differently. I bet they would have put down their arguments and leaned in with their whole bodies. I bet they would have asked questions and halted the small talk. I bet they would have taken notes and hung on your every word. Jesus of Nazareth, I want to listen like that. We want to listen like tonight might be the last time you speak. We want to listen like everything could change tomorrow. We want to listen like our soul depends on it. So gracious God, clear away anything in us that might distract. Clear away anything in us that might hinder our hearing and receiving of your word. I am listening, we are listening. With hope and honesty, we pray. Amen. The scripture reading is from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 7 and 31 through 35. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into, it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where am I going, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. If only we had known. How many times have you thought or said that statement aloud in the last year? If only we had known, we wouldn't have put off that trip to visit family. If only we would have known we would have prioritized traveling more. If only we had known we would have tried more new restaurants, said yes to more dinner invitations. If only we had known. If only we had known that attending school in person was actually a privilege, that playing or watching sports wasn't a guarantee. If only we would have known, we wouldn't have missed so many opportunities to worship in person. If only we had known that March of last year would be the last time we'd get to take communion together in person. The last time we would worship in our building, shake hands, give hugs. The last time we would sing hymns or congregate down in the fellowship hall. At least the last time for some time. We would have savored the day differently. 
wouldn't have we? If only we had known. We would have gone on that last missions trip, volunteered for that nonprofit, visited friends, family, loved ones, especially those who are living in senior living facilities. If only we had known. If only. My friends, it has been a tough year. In the last year, so many of the things that we used to take for granted have been taken away, put on hold, or moved out of reach. We have learned that the many things we used to take for granted are more important than we may have realized. That many of the things we used to do out of routine or ritual or requirement were actually a privilege and life giving. It feels a lot like that old song, doesn't it? You never know what you got until it's gone. In this last year, we have had the unique experience of having a large portion of life as we know it disappear unexpectedly. We have experienced the grief of the grief of the loss of the known and the loss of so many lives. And yet we have also lived with the hope of seeing the other side of this, haven't we? The hope that one day life as we knew it will return. And as those pieces of our lives slowly return, we are able to visit, when we're able to visit family and friends again, Attend church in person again. Sit in classrooms. Attend concerts. Eat inside at our favorite restaurants. See our loved ones in their senior living facilities. I suspect that you and I will be filled with a deep sense of joy and gratitude. That we will savor each and every interaction and opportunity in a way that we probably didn't do before COVID. Because now we've realized that much of life is truly a gift and one that we shouldn't take for granted. Yes, we're still in the in-between, I know. I still find myself thinking or saying, if only I had known because the normal life that we long for is still somewhere down the road from here. But we're slowly making our way back to it ever so slowly. And if only we had known that this would happen, then perhaps we would have taken more care, been more intentional about the way we lived our lives. Friends, unlike us, Jesus did know. Jesus knew that life as he knew it, life as his disciples knew it, was all about to change. Jesus knew that his death was near, and so on that last night together with his disciples. Jesus lived it with all of the care and gratitude and intention that this foreknowledge could give him. Almost all of the disciples were still in disbelief regarding Jesus' predictions of his death. They didn't really believe it was going to happen. Most of them had no idea that everything was about to change in an instant. But Jesus knew. Jesus knew. That all that was normal and routine about life together was about to come to an end. That his time with the disciples was coming to a close. And knowing all of this, Jesus took on the role of a servant. In fact, Jesus did the job that was most often left for the lowest individual or servant in the house. 
Washing someone's feet was a customary act of hospitality. When you washed your guests' feet, you helped to clear away the wear and the tear of their travels. By assisting them with washing off the filth of the day and helping them to start off their visit feeling fresh and clean. But Jesus took on the role of a servant. Jesus, their master, their teacher, washed their feet. And it was probably because none of them had taken the initiative to do it. Because if they had, it would have signified that they were the least important disciple. But Jesus had a new commandment for them. They were to love one another as Jesus loved them. And Jesus modeled that love throughout his entire ministry. And now Jesus modeled that love by washing his disciples' feet. This act was a tangible reminder about the kind of love that Jesus was talking about. The kind of love that Jesus was talking about looked like a master washing his disciples' feet. Jesus washed the feet of the ones who were his followers, his students, the ones who often misunderstood his teachings, the ones who argued with him. Jesus washed the feet of the one who would betray him, the ones who would deny him, all the ones who loved him. Jesus washed all of the disciples' feet. And this kind of teaching, this kind of service, this great act of radical love is one that we so often fall short of producing in our own lives, isn't it? Jesus told his disciples to treat each other the way that he had treated them, which meant that they weren't supposed to think that they were too good to care for the basic needs of each other, that they weren't supposed to think that they were too important or powerful to care for others. Even those who would betray them, even those they had disagreements with, it was still going to be their job to love one another, to wash off the weariness of the world from each other's feet. Jesus embodied the way that he desired his disciples to live. He modeled that radical hospitality and care and love that you and I strive to live out. But we often find it hard to love one another the way Jesus did. And yet, there was something about this text that really got me thinking. That perhaps, in a small way, many of us have been washing each other's feet during this entire pandemic. I mean, think about it. We've been wearing masks, practicing physical distancing, worshiping online, donating to local nonprofits, writing letters and cards and sending emails, calling to check in on people and delivering care packages as a means to care for our family, our friends, our community members, even those we disagree with, and even those whose actions may feel like betrayal at times. Because it was the best way for us to love one another right now. Diana Butler Bass helped me to reframe the way I've been thinking about this last year. She said, you haven't lost a year of your life due to COVID. You've invested a year of your life into saving the lives of your family, friends, neighbors, and strangers. And that sounds a lot like Jesus' love to me. And I say all this perhaps even without realizing it, but many of you are currently showing love to one another in important and life-giving ways. And perhaps you didn't even realize it. And so I hope 
that as we slowly move into the season where pieces and parts of our regular lives become possible again, that we'll approach them with gratitude and with intention, and that we will savor the opportunity to love and serve one another in old and new ways. Because friends, life is a gift. And may we receive it with gratitude and may we serve and love others with intention. Amen. We are each a tapestry of stories. We are stories of fear and grief, as well as our stories of love and joy. We believe that God sees all those interwoven truths and say to our fragile selves, come in, come in from the cold, come in from the rain, come in from wherever you are and be here tonight. We believe that God then pours warm water into a basin to wash off the weariness of the day, the bruises of the past, and the doubt that clings to us. We believe that this act is an act of love. Similarly, we believe that God says to us, eat, and God shares of God's self. And it is food not only for our bodies, but for our souls. We believe that all this happens every time we close our eyes and imagine God, every time we close our eyes and imagine God. We believe the parts of our tapestry that feel worn and frayed are held together. So today we eat and we remember. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, he passed it out among his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he lifted up the cup and he said, This cup represents my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those gathered around these virtual tables and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be to us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us whole with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world. Amen. Amen.
leave you with this blessing this evening. As you leave our time together, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. And may your arms hold those in need. And may your feet walk towards justice. May your heart trust its worth. And may your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day in the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself. Go with courage, go with heart, and go in peace. Amen. the fact